Hi and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. I'm Nick Thomas and bringing you HEMA at home. Today we're going to be looking at your thrusts according to British military swordsmanship and specifically in Roth. Now, um, thrusts should be used with all of the swords in this system. It is a cut and thrust based system no matter which weapon you have. Um, the broadsword he does say is less suited to uh, thrusting actions. The Superdruin is obviously really well suited to it. And your um, curved sabres also still suited to it. They're not as good at thrust work as a straight blade, but they have some sneaky tricks to play. So they are good. Also when Roeth published his manual, um, infantry sabers weren't regulation at the time. So it's likely when he talks about um, saber, he's actually talking about a cavalry sword anyway. So that's an interesting one. So that is the light cavalry saber. Thrusts, you've got four thrusts. Three of them I like, one of them I don't, for a cut and thrust based uh, system. So, oh, and uh, before we go into this, um, I'm only going to give you a shorter video here about the thrust work, but I'm going to give you the actual, the four thrusts. I would highly recommend you then go and watch my um, thrust in with the Sabre and British Military Swordsmanship class, which I ran at Kings of the North last year. The whole class is um, on YouTube on this channel. So that'll give you a load more drills and exercises and tons of extra info. But this is really good to just learn the four thrusts. Right. If I'm on my outside guard and I thrust high over the top of the opponent's blade so it goes over their arm, that's a thrust in tears. So from here, like this. Now it could be in this position with the flat horizontal of the floor or it could turn slightly into a hanging guard type position. Uh, that's usually more dependent on what you need to do to get the blade in. But the important thing is, is that you started with the edge on and you drop the point in over the top of their forearm. A straight blade works fine for that. A curved blade actually works over the top of the guard and drops in, which is quite nice. Although if it's wildly curved, like some of the crazy things I have shown on this channel, it can um, not land and go all over the place and be a bit too short and all kinds of things. But up to about six centimeters of curve, maybe five, you'll have no problem using those thrusts. If I do the same thrust, but instead of going over the top of the arm, I drop under it and do this. So I'm more likely now to be aiming towards the flank area. That is a thrust in second. So over the top, tierce, underneath, second. So if I was in my guard here and outside and the blade came over the top here, that would be the thrust in tierce. If the blade came under, thrust in second. So that gives you an idea of how the outside thrusts work. Those are absolutely fine and good. If we now move to the inside line, if a thrust high on the inside, that is a thrusting cut. If I thrust low, that is a thrust in low cut. Now, personally, the low cut one is the one that I really don't like. Not for all weapons. The small sword is actually quite good. But for cut and thrust based swords, I find it opens up too many vulnerabilities. So when we thrust in low cut, we're in this position, just like I said, with the leg attacks, where we're just weak. We're in a half circle kind of position. It's hard to get to any particularly good defenses. If you're using a point only sword like a small sword, not too much of a problem because nobody's going to be caving your head in or cutting against your arm. But with a cut and thrust sword, those are real concerns. Now, Roth does say that if you have concerns about cuts, you should turn the ward iron up to protect you so that low cut instead of this becomes this. So we've gone from a flat of our blade horizontal parallel sorry, to the floor to the edge up like we were in cut three position or as he says, half circle guard. So you've got more protection but it's kind of hard to get the accuracy in for a lot of people at this point. And again, you are weak in terms of your, in terms of protection. So I don't like that one for cut and thrust swords. By all means, have some fun with it and see how you do with it. We all find these things different. I do like the thrusting cut. So if we go from an inside position and thrust against a high inside of our opponent, that is the thrusting cut. The rule of all these thrusts is they should initiate with the true edge against your opponent's blade. So if you're any, in, any time in doubt as to whether you're doing it right, check that your true edge started opposing their blade. So actually go into contact with the true edge. So if we're on the outside, it's here. So if we're gonna be thrusting into us, we're gonna be meeting them on the front edge here. Cart, they're gonna be here. That is the best way to thrust for your defense because it puts the 
the body mechanics in the best possible option, puts our uh, ward iron in there so we've got protection in as best as we possibly can get. So again, from here, if we thrust high over the top, we go into tiers. Underneath, much the same motion, but under their arm, second. Inside, high, cart. Inside, low, low cart. Those are your four thrusts for using the front edge on in British military swordsmanship. As I said, I like three. I don't like the low cart one. But yeah, you have a play with it. Now, we can also rotate the blade onto the back um, and use, especially if you have a curved blade, we can use the curvature to work around the opponent's blade. So if you imagine that you were on this side of my blade, I'm engaging against it and then I can rotate and from here, engage against your blade on the outside, rotate and put the fo basically false edge on effectively and use the curvature to work around the blade. We can do exactly the same the other side. So we start on the inside, we push forward and rotate and drop it in. That is outlined in detail in the video I did at Kings of the North, so I highly recommend you check that out. So that's cart over the arm and the other side doesn't have a name, but I like to call it prem over the arm because it matches the system. <clears throat> Those are sneaky, sneaky thrusts, but they are vulnerable. You need to actually get some pushback again from the opponent. They need to apply some pressure because if they don't, you're going to get timed. And you are less protected when you do it. So you've got to use it wisely. But again, watch the video because that's covered in detail in that particular video. So there you have it. Four thrusts. Thrust in tierce. Thrust in second. Thrust in cart. And thrust low cart. If you want to practice those at home, you could just go through them in that order and then start mixing it up. That's a good exercise to work through. In terms of your reach, at all times where possible, you should be aiming for maximum reach like this. Maximum reach is straight line, point of, point of the sword to, to, my to, my, sorry, to my shoulder. But you also have to adapt for defense. So if it is necessary to move the blade slightly in different ways, angling it out, up, for defensive purposes to cover the opponent's blade, then that's fine. And once again, Roeth said to do that, say, turning the ward iron up into half circle, or from our tierce thrust, rotating up into a hanging guard position. So sometimes you need to lose a bit of reach to gain a bit of defense when you're going in. But do train for as much reach as you can possibly get. So there's your uh, thrusting technique. As far as your lunge goes, your recovery, your rear hand, it's all the same as all your cuts. You just need to use those four motions of the thrust. And on a side note, we should all be doing more thrust work with military swords because people do have a tendency to do choppy chop all the time because it's easy, makes a good sound when it hits, all these kind of things. Um, and there's less, um, uh, well, more room for error, if you like, because you swing through, you've got a big arc to hit somebody in. You go with a point work, you've got to hit that exact pinpoint location. And a thrust can also be displaced with a lot less energy than a cut, and it can even be displaced with the offhand. So there are some other risks of um, using thrusts, but they are incredibly fast, they can do some sneaky things, and we know historically they were, um, particularly to certain target downs like the chest, tended to incapacitate very quickly, and, um, and obviously kill as well very effectively, but your main concern would be incapacitation if you were in a, obviously a, a fight to the death. But um, yeah, you should be doing more thrusts with all of your military swords, I highly recommend it. Obviously the squadron should be doing loads, but realistically you should be thrusting with all of those swords. So, that's your thrusts. I do hope you've enjoyed them. Um, remember to practice your disengages when you also do these thrusts. So do practice, say going from your inside guard, changing to outside, thrust in tiers. Okay, practice those things, that's good as well. But there you go, that's it, you have your thrust in. Please do check out the Kings of the North uh, video. I will put it in the uh, description below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already.